Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is uh, ICS321, and today is uh, June 10th, and um, uh, and today we're going to uh, continue with Chapter 3. So let me share my screen. And uh, last video was, uh, this is, we, this is, June 10th, so we are in the first week or the first cycle of um, database design. I guess, do we, are we supposed to go up to 3.5 today? I don't think we're gonna make it, but um, so today, today I'm gonna, uh, we, we did 3.1 and 3.2, yes. and do we do 3.3 yesterday or? Uh, I don't we, think, no, we didn't. I don't no. think we did. Right, so, so let's start with, with cardinality. All right. So uh, cardinality uh, refers to um, a maximum and a minimum number of relationships that a uh, you know table can have, or a you know a relationship or an entity can have a, a single entity, which would be a a um, a, a record of a table. Um, uh, with res um, 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 how many uh, how many entities in another table that uh, that that particular entity can have? That didn't make much sense. So, but uh, there's there's a maximum and a minimum uh, number of relationships that each uh, entity can have regarding. Uh, relationships with other entities and um, attributes themselves, and so we'll see what these these mean. And so we have mi maxima and minima, and we have relationships and attributes. So there's four different kinds of cardinality uh, measures here. Uh, so let's start with maximum. Uh, this is the greatest number of instances that one entity can relate to a, to a single instance of another entity. Um, and the relationship has two maxima, one for each, uh, one for each of the related entities. So one going in one direction, one going in the other direction. So an example of this is, uh, oh, and they're they're denoted by a one or an M for one or many, and you'll see what this means. Um, okay, so for example, uh, let's just let's just look here. A uh, each flight departs from at most one airport. So we have, we have um, uh, the departs from relation here between flights and airports. Uh, a, a flight departs from at most one airport. So, so we put a one here uh, at, on the airport side of the flight to airport, um, you know, relationship link here. Uh, which is named uh, uh, departs from, and uh, each 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 airport though can have many departing flights. So so in this airport table and in this flight table, we can have uh, many flights departing from one airport. See, so that's so that's how so the relationship between airport and flights. Uh, an airport can can have many flights departing from it. So we put the M on the side. Uh, on the flight side of the relationship. And uh, arrives at is the same. And uh, each airline schedules many flights and multiple flights share the same, uh, multiple airlines sh share the same flights. Okay, so what they're talking about is, you know, a particular airline. And, and I think they're referring to um, like, uh, I think by airline they mean like air, airline company like Southwest Air or whatever. Um, and when they say multiple airlines share the same flights, uh, I think what they're referring to is that you know you can book a particular flight and and it might have a Delta number, uh, it might have a Southwest number, it might have a Hawaiian Air number, uh, and that's because multiple airlines can share the same same flight. And a flight would be the uh, point to point, you know, um, entry in a table, of course, a particular airplane can can do multiple flights, but of course, not at the same time. Yeah. 
All right. Um, it was, is there more? Yes. Uh, last thing is each airport resides at exactly one address and each address has at most one airport. And so this, uh, this is to make sure you understand this relationship maximum. Uh, so a student takes courses. Um, uh, a, you can have uh, many students taking a single course and you can have a student taking many courses. So I think it's many to many. Uh, you have a, a city um, is can be this can be the capital that capital of at most one state and a state can have at most one capital. So I think it's one to one. A person can have many passports, uh, but a passport can only be had by one person. So that would be um, one to many. And uh, a person has exactly one mailing address, but many people can have the same mailing address. So I guess that'd be this one. And a person can own many vehicles and a vehicle can be owned by many persons, usually, depending on the state. So I guess it'd be this one. Um, so that's that would be the maximum. These are relationship maximums between different entities. Um, okay, and then we have relationship um, minimum, which is, um, the least number of instances that one entity can relate to a single instance of another entity. And I guess it's usually zero one if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And um, uh, the relationship has, has, um, has one or, a relationship has two minima, of course, uh, one for each side. And it's minima is usually specified as zero or one. Um, and the parentheses mean something I'm kidding. Parentheses means it's, um, I guess the minima is shown after the maxima, I see. So this, 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 the one is the minimum. Uh, and for, for this case here, the, the one is the minimum. So passenger, uh, um, a booking is held by exactly one passenger. Oh, oh, but a passenger can uh, uh, up a minimum. A passenger has to hold a minimum of, six, of one booking, but it can hold many bookings. Let's see. Each booking must be included in exactly one flight. One exactly one flight and one passenger. Uh, a new flight includes no bookings, so that means the minimum uh, that a flight can have is zero bookings. Um, the booking can only have, can have a maximum of one flight and a maximum of one passenger. And the definition of passenger requires that all passengers hold a booking. Okay, so that's why. So a passenger has got to hold a booking because otherwise they're not a passenger. Uh, but the a passenger can hold many bookings, I guess. Yes, that I know it doesn't make sense. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, so, you know, go through this. A person marries person. It's uh, uh this is the minima, the minima. So it'd be a uh, people, there can be persons that, don't, that aren't married to anybody. So I guess it's this one. Uh, and a person, um, a person can have, oh, the minimum of, of number of password, passports that a person can have is zero. And the minimum number of persons that can be had by a passport would be one. So I guess it's this one. Oops. Oh, oh no, 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 oops, it's uh, this one. I think I made that same mistake last time. A person can hold a minimum of zero passwords, and a pass passport though can be held can be held by a minimum of one person. You can't have a passport without a person. And then flight arrives at airport would be a many flights. So oh, the minimum again again keep it straight. Minimum is um, um there can be. There can be a flight. Okay, is it uh, one to one? Okay, all flights must arrive at an airport. Assuming a database does not track new or inactive airports. I guess. So, oh yeah, new. Okay, so yeah, so the, the database does not track inactive airports. 
So then it's one instead of zero. The air, otherwise the uh, the flight side could be zero for the minimum here, or I mean, otherwise it could be this one. Does it say would be this one? Assuming the database does not track all airports have, have an arriving flight. All right. Uh, so um, now we're talking about attributes. Okay, these are relations. These are relations between two entities. Now these are the number of at these. These are attributes that an entity can have. Uh, so. Um, so um, a relationship uh, entity has attribute. This relationship, like any other, has maxima and minima. And so uh, an entity has, has attribute. Uh, the, the rule can be that, that the entity uh, has at most uh, a single instance of the attribute, or the entity can have uh, many attribute instances. Uh, and also, it may be that the attribute um, that the the attribute itself uh, defines only one one instance of the entity, and so uh, it would be something like uh, you know singular attribute could be uh, spouse, assuming um, you live in assuming people only have one, would have at most one spouse. Uh, plural uh, means that uh, you can have multiple children, uh, and uh, unique would be you know, your social security number. Everyone's got a social number. Uh, a unique attribute would be um, at most one entity instance, uh, which is unique, um, which which could be possibly you know the primary key of that of that particular table. So. Um, uh, unique, of course, is not the same as singular. Uh, full name is is sing singular, uh, but uh, a particular full name can describe more than one employee. Possible two employees of the same same name, obviously. And so, in ER diagrams, entity and attribute maxima appear as a M or a one. So, for example, here we have. Um, uh, in an employee, this is the entity, and these are the attributes. So uh, um, the employee uh, employee has exactly one employee number, and there's one employee number per. Uh, uh, it's 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 unique and singular. Uh, passport number is um, would be unique, but. Um, a person can have many passports. This is maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A passport number can only be connected to one employee, but an employee can have multiple passport numbers. And next one is, um, it's not unique and it's singular. An employee is only gonna have one full name, uh, but a full name can be had by uh, multiple employees and skill code is many to many because um, this is maximum. Uh, an employee can have many skills and skills can be had by many employees. All right, uh, so this uh, helps to ensure that you understand what um, these, the entity has attribute maxima relationships can be. Uh, this entity airport, every airport has exactly one airport code. So I think it's this one. Uh, entity booking, total cost. Um, uh, a booking only has one total cost, but a, to a particular total cost can, can be had by multiple bookings. A you know, particular dollar total cost can be, there can be lots of bookings that if you're booking tickets. Yeah. So um, I guess that would be this one. And then a passenger and passenger name. Again, there can be many uh, passenger has passenger name. Passenger name side can be um, uh, there can be um, many passengers with the same name. So is it this one? Yes. Passenger name 
can be had by many passengers. So that's why the many is here. And uh, an entity passenger only has a single passenger name. So that's why the one is there. And entity uh, employee and attribute language code, of course, um, an employee is gonna teach, oh, this is Maxima, so it's, um, oh, it's, so it's this one. An employee can speak many languages and, and a language can be spoken by many employees. Okay, then there's um, minimal. And uh, so with, with, um, with minimum, uh, it's, um, uh, it's, if it's required, then at least there has to be at least one. If it's not required, then it can be zero. So it's optional. Uh, so it's the minimum on the entity side of the uh, entity has attribute um, relationship, I guess. Um, Some place it just says distinguishes between. Uh, oh no, never mind. That's in the next section. All right. So um, for minimum, the minimum. The minima appears in parentheses after the maxima, and usually only the attribute minimum is noted on diagrams. Uh, since entity minimum does not affect database design, usually only attribute minimum is denoted on diagrams. Since entity um, minimum does not affect yeah, okay. So we're talking about attribute minimum here, but uh, and not not the minimum between two two entities. That's right. Entity and real okay, two entities, right? So the minimum the relationship minimum, I guess, is, is often not shown. Anyway, uh, so uh, they they appear in parentheses uh, when we're when we have lines going from from uh, you know um, entity to entity or table to table, and uh, they would be inside the table when we're talking about the minimum number of attributes, the maximum and the minimum number of attributes. Uh, the the relationship between the attribute and the and the entity. Um, all right, so here we see that uh, employee to employee number, uh, uh, employee has exactly one employee number and, and an employee number is had by exactly one employee. Passport, uh, a passport can be held by uh, a, a, uh, a passport is held by exactly a, a minimum of one employee and the, but, I, but an employee can have, you know, multiple passwords. And with full name, you know, um, this, this M refers to this side and this full name refers to the one here. And this M refers to this, to the entity and the skill code refers, this one refers to the attribute of skill code. And so, you know, this all makes sense. Um, so here we have, uh, match the term to the database requirement. Um, let's see, we track at most one contact telephone number for each student. So uh, that would be singular. I wonder if the, I wonder if we are, um, if the telephone number is, is unique. Let's see if there's something else that's unique. All students have an official email address, so that would be unique, I think. All students are assigned in a digit. Oh, must, oh, the word must is kind of revealing here. So I wonder if this is required. Yes. Okay, so this must be unique.
and now we have that we track. So this must be singular. This must be optional. And this must be singular. And this is plural because a student can major in several subjects. All right, so anyway. Um, all right, so uh, the relationship and attribute cardinality, of course, depends on business rules. And uh, employee works in department is um, one to many because the one refers to the department and the many refers to the employee. A department can have many employees, but employee has to be in at least one department. Uh, so that's why it's kind of confusing this, this notation. But if a company assigns employees to multiple departments, which is possible, then it would be many to many because uh, the department, an employee could be in many departments. So this side would be a many instead of a one. During the analysis phase, the designer looks for cardinality business rules in interviews and document review. So, you know, so if you're, um, so I talk about um, how sometimes students that take that, sometimes students that come into computer science classes um, are doing so because they really like computers and computer science and what computer science does and accomplishes and so on. But they're, but maybe when it comes time to take programming classes, maybe they just, they, they just don't get a, they just don't feel comfortable writing programs or they end up not being very good at them or whatever. Uh, it is, uh, but they, but they uh, still want to work in computers and still they understand what the, what the programmer does and everything. Uh, this is the kind of task that I, that may appeal to computer scientists, to computer science students that, that, that aren't, that, that don't get the, the um, you know, auxiliary, auxiliary uh, you know, the, the uh, I, can't, I can't pronounce the word, but uh, the feeling that you get, the charge that you get out of getting programs to run, you know, incrementally and so on, uh, that's what kind of makes people like to write programs. I guess it's the same kind of thing when people uh, play games, computer games, and they're, and they're so-called hooked on them, you know, they, they play it, play hours, hours, um, you know, hour after hour, uh, programmers often, people that end up being, bo are born programmers, they like, they sit and write code for hours and hours. And, you know, I used to do that back before I had a family and so on, you kind of, kind of can't do it so much then. But anyway, what I'm what I'm saying is that this this kind of stuff is very important. It's very important in the design of, of systems. And you aren't writing code here. You're just understanding how the data relates to each other. And you're interviewing people and you're reviewing documents. And that's very important computer science work. Uh, but you're not programming. And so um, you know this is something that uh, if you're good at this, if you're good at, at breaking it all down in your head and writing this down, then then you definitely have a future in, in computer science and it might not necessarily be coding. So anyway, um, uh, this says what you should do. First, you should uh, determine the relationship and relationship maxima and minima. And that's like between two tables, the entities and two tables, uh, you know, the arrows, arrows between the two tables. Uh, then you do the, min, the minima. I mean, no, then you do the uh, attribute maxima and minima. So that's, you have a table and you have a column name and then you have uh, a, or, or you, you have a table and then you have a field name and uh, and you say uh, for for maximum, how many you know you can have and for minimum, how many you can have. Minima is whether it's required or not. And then uh, you should uh, uh, document that in, uh, you know, either put it on the ER di diagram or documented in the glossary. And I don't really know why it's uh, 2A, 2B, and 2D, but it could have, it could refer to something uh, previously uh, in a previous chapter. But anyway, I, I submitted a feedback thing and and I just question mark, you know, should there be a 2C? And so I'm not actually sure what this refers to, but anyway, um, maybe I'll hear back from him. Have I heard back from him yet? I don't think so. 
All right, so um, cardinality refers to relationships only. No, it refers to both uh, relationships and attributes. So anyway, you can do you can do this. You can see I've done it already. All right, uh, so this is a pretty good um, <clears throat> challenge activity here. A person checks out. Okay, let's just do one of them. A person checks out many books. Oh, by the way, this is different than the one I did before. A book is checked out by one person. So what's the the relationship? So it's book is checked out by a person. So um many one uh, yeah a, per, a person can check out many books but a book can only be checked out by one person i guess is that what you're saying this one yeah i think so yeah that's right okay cool so let's do just one more and then we can leave the rest for uh, the viewers at home okay um each admissions well college has admissions office so each college, so on this side, oh, and admissions office, and, and, admiss and admission, wait a minute. Well, this is the minimum, okay? So college has to have at least one admissions office. So um, that's a oh one, God. yeah. And then uh, each college, each admissions office belongs to one, oh, this is just one-to-one? -one. I think so. I guess okay. It's... All right. So uh, it's ten fifty nine. Let's uh, go on to the next section. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So this this kind of refers to um, a master entity and and uh, um, dependent entities and whether a master entity uh, needs to exist uh, or not for the for the dependent entity to to exist. I think um, you know this. They're going to eventually change this term to um, parent. I think because master sort of implies you know master slave kind of thing. I remember when I started. I started in electrical engineering, and um, there's a lot of components in when you're in this digital electronics. There's a lot of components where uh, certain things control other things. And, uh, and, uh, and on communication paths inside the computer, like the bus, computer bus, there's a, uh, um, whenever there's a communication, there's usually uh, a master that's, that's in doing the communication and a, a slave, which is receiving the communication. And back when I started, it was, it was called a master slave relationship. Uh, and it's changed, it changed over the years. Cause I was, when I was an electrical engineer, uh, I was for, for a number of years and, um, I can't, um, so they they changed it to more, uh, you know, ch parent, child, and and siblings instead of sister and so on. But anyway, um, you know, that this kind of stuff is coming in, coming in, in, in political, politic, it's a political topic now, and there, you may have heard of um, critical race theory and so on. And so anyway, uh, that's a completely different subject. But this reminded me of it. All right, so uh, entity A depends on entity B. If instances of A uh, in the relationship uh, exist only in a relationship, only in a relationship to instances B, uh, a task depends on a project. Uh, uh, if, if, you know, if, if all tasks need to be part of a project, then you have to have a project uh, before you have a task. Uh, if you get rid of a project, you're getting rid of all the tasks that that uh, the, that were um, part of the project. And a project must exist before tasks are created. So, so we say that you know tasks are dependent on projects. When a project is deleted, so are the tasks. So a dependent entity depends on another entity uh, called the master entity. Uh, and the dependent and master entities are related by a dependency relationship. And so it, it's, it is this belongs to uh, verb here. So a task belongs to a project. It's a dependency relationship. And somewhere along here, it explains that the terminology in entity relationship diagrams, the term dependence is different than the, than the term dependence that we used back in chapter two, where we talked about functional dependency 
and how a, um, a field dependent on, on another field uh, function, that's functional dependence. And, and what we're talking about in this context is existence dependence. I've often wondered how in a textbook that includes all of this stuff, how they resolve these ambiguous, what, what these ter terms that are used in, in various contexts and it's all in databases and, and it makes sense. You gotta have these little technology boxes in here. You know, you can't just go by you know, searching the web for a particular uh, term for what a particular term means. So anyway, um, uh, so an entity can also depend on multiple, multiple master entities and there can also be hierarchies of dependencies. So, uh, and an independent entity does not depend on another entity. Uh, a university database, us and students and departments can be created without reference references to any other uh, entity. So student students can be created without reference to any other entity. Uh, but so they're oh yes right so they're independent entities not not dependent entities. Okay so here for example we have a uh, oh, oh and, and so it's so it's it's an upward arrow. It's uh, depends on is the, or belongs to. Or so it's, you, you might think the arrow should be in the other direction, but it, it's a, a task depends on a project. It's not a project possesses a task. You know, it's like you can have a task, you can have a project without a task. Uh, you know, once you first create the project, uh, you know, the existence of the project. Um, and then, and then, of course, you can't have a subtask without a task. Uh, here's an example where um, uh, you, uh, an entity can depend on multiple master entities. We have a person and a country as master uh, entities, and we have a passport. Uh, and depends there. There can't be a, a passport cannot, you know, exist without the person and the country. You know, it's, yeah, you have to have both of those, and then there can then we can create a passport. Uh, that's so. So that's a pretty strong example. Um, here, here also, um, you know, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. A booking cannot exist uh, without the the flight that the booking is on and the passenger who is who is who is booking the flight. So that again is uh, oh a, oh and. Hierarchies, of course, this is an example of hierarchies, I guess. All right, uh, so, so you can uh, do this one. Um, so master entities, uh, I guess a course can be a master entity um, and you can have exams that belong to courses. Uh, and so this is, it's a hierarchical thing. And then of course it belongs to a department. So, um, so I guess this is this. And then an uh, exam belongs to a course is a relationship. And um, uh, this is an independent entity. This is not an, this is not independent. Well, this, this is not independent. This, this has to be part of a course. Somewhere it says that, but so this is dependent and this is independent. All right, um, independent. Uh, how often is a master entity also an independent? An entity. How long, often is a master entity also an independent entity? Well, quite often, um, and it's not always because. Here, here it's not independent, but it's a master. So I guess it'd be sometimes. And how many dependency relationships can each dependent ent entity have? Well, um, you know, here it's two, here it's one. So uh, one or many. Uh, okay, if it's a dependent entity, it has to have at least one, so it's not, well, anyway, it's this one, I'm pretty sure. They should have zero, one, or many. 
how many dependent entities can depend on one independent entity? How many deep or many? How many dependent entities can depend on one independent? I would say zero. Oh no. Uh, this one. Because you can have zero. Uh, an independent entity can have zero dependent entities or one dependent entities or many dependent entities. Uh, so there's um, cause of some conventions here. And I remember learning this. Can we just start drawing these. Oh, here we're starting to draw these things. Yeah, this is the notation that I learned. There's a couple of different notations for this. This notation seems to make the most sense to me. Uh, so um, this material uses relative of the crow's feet, right? This material, this material uses relatively simple conventions for ER models and diagrams. Conventions um, vary wide, widely. Um, and uh, this is what I remember. Uh, refer, some refer to independent entities as, as strong and dependent entities as weak. <laughs> some e ER diagrams may detect, depict relationship names inside of a diamond, depict dependency relationships with a diamond rather than an arrowhead, use color or dashed lines to convey additional information. Uh, it can be a dashed line is uh, strong because uh, because they're unnecessary. Uh, weak ones are strong because they aren't are, are well, however the convention is. There's various conventions. And then a cardinality showing cardinality. Um, zero or one uh, at the end of the relationship for the um, a crossbar at the end of, end of the relationship, that'd be the minimum and then many, zero or one or, or many and the crow's feet uh, and unified modeling language is commonly used for software development. Uh, software data structures are si similar to um, database structures. So uh, UML, Unified uh, Modeling Language. Uh, and I I haven't stressed this in the past. So it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to submit drawings and to, to, um, to, um, to grade them. Uh, and so, but this, this, but now we're just gonna rely on what uh, Zybooks has for us. Um, so, so here's an example of, uh, the cloud, cloud information model, an industry model for sales fulfillment databases. This is interesting. And so if you can see what all these things mean, uh, zero a shipment, zero many, a sh shipment may include many. Um, so let, let, let's see what this does here. Okay, so there's parties, there's payments, there's payment methods, there's products, there's shipments, and there's sales orders. So in the subject areas, we have shipments. Okay, for a shipment, okay, a shipment subject area con contains entities related to uh, product shipments. The shipment subject area contains entities related to product shipments, and entity rectangles have round corners. So these are all entities. These are entities. Which means they're probably in some table someplace. Entities. All right, so what's next here? Cardinality depicts, depicted with crow's feet notation. And so uh, dependency relationships are depicted with diamonds. So I guess you need to have You need to have um, a shipment before you can have a shipment product, and you have to have a shipment before a shipment package. So this this diamond here on this end uh, depicts a dependency uh, 
that shipment product depends on the shipment. So same here. Now this crow's feet means a shipment can I guess have no, can have many products or no products. Shipment product can have, I guess, um, I'm not sure what the double the double line means. Uh, let's keep moving here and see. Is it over? Entities inside the subject area are yellow. Related entities outside the subject area area are white. So these are related. Uh, all right. So. Um, All right, um, a sh shipment product has got to have a package and it's got to have a price and, a, and an adjustment. Price, product, price adjustment. Okay. And a shipment package can have zero or many documents, I guess. And uh, you can't have a shipment document without a shipment package. So this must mean minimum of one. And zero would be minimum of zero. I'm not sure about that. I can't remember. What does it say here? Okay, um, one bar across the, uh, okay, variations. Okay, one means many, three lines to crow's feet, a bar across the end of a relationship, a zero uh, at the end of a relationship. So um, is, is this a bar? That must be a bar. It's, why are there two of them? Okay, well, anyway, um, I think that's what that means. It means you have to have, have at least one. Okay, so anyway. Um, I I found yes. the diagram online and it says, so one bar is one too many. And then two bars is one and only one. I, oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes there's one bar. Yeah, sometimes it looks like there's one bar. I mean, not on this diagram, but like two bars means one and only one. Okay. Yeah, right. That would make sense. Um, let's see. Crows, feet, entity, relationship. <laughs> let's see. Oh, this is an ad. I don't need an ad. I want Wikipedia. Oh, I, hmm? um, I typed in notation entity relationship diagram. And then, oh, this is a good, what you found is good. Maybe. This one is a related diagram showing crow's feet notation. In this example, optional relationship shown between the artist and song. The symbols are, are closest to the song entity remain uh, zero, one, or many. Uh, so an artist can have zero songs. Uh, the symbols closest to the song represent zero, one, or many, whereas the song has one and only one artist. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is what you said. Okay. 
The former is therefore read as an artist can perform zero, one, or many songs. Um, so, so you can be an artist and not provide this. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> And right, I was just anyway, laughing because there's some art, there's some songs that have multiple cover artists. <laughs> well, I know, yeah. yeah. And, for, and for somebody that has no songs, are they really considered an artist? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, anyway. yeah. All right, so that's that. Um, okay, diagrams, many is depicted with a... Um, Crow's feet? Crows, yeah, crow's feet. All right. In some models, uh, dependent entities are called uh, weak entities. I think it's weak, right, yeah. Weak. Okay. A group of related entities is called a subject, subject area yeah subject area okay yeah okay anyway uh, is a modeling standard for you yeah unified modeling okay all right um so here's a uh, here's oh, here it's three a three b uh, okay after entities relationships and attributes and cardinality uh, are determined the data database designer distinguishes independent and dependent entities. For each dependent entity, the dependency relationship is identified and named, of course, the, de the dependent entities and dependency relationships should be documented in a glossary or ER diagram. Many database designers use software tools and uh, they allow you to choose between different conventions. First, you identify the identity independent and dependent, then you determine the relationship for each dependent entity, and then you document it. Distinguishing independent and dependent entities is a logical design activity. Um, where's, where's the word logical? Where's the word logical? I'm not trying this one. Uh, yeah, here we go. Is a oh, this is the first time we see the question. Oh, it's the first time we see it. Um, well, I'm going to say yes. Entity dependence is not related to a specific database system. Activities that document. I guess it's because we are. Activities that document database requirements without regard to a specific database are part of the analysis phase. Huh. Okay, I guess um, doing logical database design is, is more, more or less designing the database and uh, distinguishing between dependent independent and dependent entities is more um, uh, it's I can see how it's not related to specific database design it's like if you're doing a a um, you, if you have a, a a database of addresses and um, you there there is an apartment number field uh, that that uh, and so apartment number depends on address. Uh, that's not related to uh, uh, distinguishing that, distinguishing uh, the address is independent and the apartment number is dependent. Uh, um, distinguishing that is not part of the logical database design. It's, it's part of understanding the, the relationship be between apartments and, and, uh, and addresses. So it's not it's not related to any specific database design. Okay, so that's how I interpret the answer to that question. Okay, okay thanks. All right, determining uh, cardinality always precedes 
distinguishing independent and dependent entities. I think it, um, uh, I, no, I don't think it precedes it, is it? I, see, I don't think this is true. Okay. Analysis activities are not always done in sequence. All right, that's what I, it's, it's set up above that. But these, yeah, it's done iteratively. Database designers can look for dependency relationships first before identifying. Uh, no, you guess you got to define the dependent entity. So is this false? No. Some database designers prefer to focus on dependency relationships rather than de rather than dependent entities. Hmm. Okay. I suppose it says that someplace up above too. All right, maybe we should try to do this this one here. An athletic associate. Oh, let's some. Um, an athletic association has a database of track meets. Each track meet has events. Each event has preliminary pre preliminary rounds called heats. Meets may be canceled and events within a meet may be canceled. Okay, so select the correct dependency relationship for each um, entity. Okay, so track meet. Is that independent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the track meets is kind of the main thing, and then, and then an event uh, is dependent on, on depends on track meet. Track meet. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. The heat must and be depending on, on events. Event. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. All right, we can do the next one. A database track, a database tracks reservations for the sporting events. All reservations must include the person who made the reservation and the identifier of the sporting event. So that's what a reservation, a reservation is gonna depend on a person and this event. When a person is removed from the database or an event is canceled, all associated reservations are deleted. Okay, so um, a reservation is an independent, is independent. Okay, yes. And uh, an event, um, uh, an event is independent too, you think? Uh, I got a different one. So let's see. Um, oh, you got a different one. Okay, well, let's see. I think it's independent because, uh, well, because because an event doesn't depend on a person, an event doesn't depend on a reservation, and an event doesn't dep depend on a reservation and a person. Right. Uh, okay. Those 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 things depend on a, on an event. So, okay, that's what I'm going to put. And a person. Well, is this independent also? Because I, I think um, I, I think a reservation depends on a person. Not it does. It's not the case that a person. Right. So it's so also. In, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Nope. Reservation. Oh, oh, the last look, sentence. Okay. Look at that. This one. This one is. Yeah, this is the one because all reservations must include a person and an event. So the reservation. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this again. A shipping company has a database of orders waiting to be shipped. Each orchid. Each orchard takes orders from wholesalers. Okay, so an order. Is the, 
I guess an order depends on an, or an orchard and a wholesaler because you have to have an orchard and a wholesaler before you can have an order, huh? Yeah. Does that make I sense? So. I think so. Yeah. Okay. And an orchard is independent, independent. and wholesaler is too? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> easy after that. All right. Well, um, now what? Um, oh, yes. I remember this. Super types and subtypes. Um, all right. Well, this this uh, deserves more than two minutes uh, of explanation. So I guess we can. Uh, I guess we can do this next week. Uh, Next week uh, starts tomorrow, but there's no class. Oh, no, actually, tomorrow's a holiday, isn't it? June 10th. Oh, I haven't so been keeping track. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. So uh, next, uh, okay, yeah, and 612 is actually Sunday. So uh, we are at, no, it's Saturday. So so anyway, uh, next week we're in here, and uh, it, that ends the 17th, which is this day. So we have plenty of time. Uh, to schedule one or two more classes in there to cover the rest of this stuff. I guess it, it's pretty clear that, that to me, the chapters two and three are the most important uh, part of designing when you're designing databases. The database has to be designed correctly uh, before you can, you know, know that you're, you have the most flexibility in, in producing tables and reports, which is what structured query language starts to help us do. So uh, anyway, um, so I hope that helps. Uh, we yeah. covered three and four today and uh, we'll cover the rest next week. Okay, right. thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Thank See you, ya. take care, bye. Take yes. care.